All right, welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is Scott Shellstrom. Scott is an artist and a business innovator who teaches how to value your inner creativity for unique solutions to everyday challenges because we all have challenges. Now he's been a creative vice president at the largest advertising agency in the world. His comedy group performed on the top New York stages. His artwork has hung in the most prestigious galleries and museums across America. And if that wasn't enough, he was also one of the first dancers on the TV show Soul Train, which you kids aren't gonna know, but it means that he has been busy with a lot of stuff for a long time. So welcome to the show, Scott. Let me hand you this virtual microphone and the stage is now yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Soul Train, can you all say it with me on that side? Soul Train. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> Soul Train was, uh, and I think still is, it's, it's, it's in some TV channels, like up in the 2000s area, but uh, it was a crazy, fun, funky, poppin' lot dancing. Uh, and it's back now. I don't know if you see World of Dance. Gosh dang it, it came back, poppin' lucky. Uh, but you know, there, there was Soul Train, and then there was American Bandstand. And American Bandstand, you know, they were dancing like this. They were polyester. They had uh, leisure suits, something else you don't know. Mom and Dad does. Ask them. Uh, and they were all dancing, you know, like, you know, they would, I, they called it dancing, but it was line dancing, they do this stuff. But, you know, on Soul Train, they would pop in and they were doing the moonwalk and they were doing the robot. And then, yes, of course, the moonwalk, gotta love that. But it was all about perspective. And, you know, I was about your age. I was very young, I think 15 or something when we first got on it. Just kids. That's what's so great about Tyler asking me to speak with you today because you are in a magical time of your life. I kind of wish that I heard this when I was your age. In fact, we're gonna be talking about Leonardo da Vinci today. He was one of the most creative people ever in the history of creativity. He lived 200 years ago. He was both an artist and a scientist and he has pages of creativity that you were not, inventions you've never seen in your life. And do you know what the secret to his creativity was? Well, at least what he thought it was, was to remain childlike. Today, you have that creativity. I mean, even think about when you were even younger, when you were just coming to school, and all you had to do was you know, play a musical instrument or color with your hands or, or, or be anything you wanted to be, and didn't you do it? Yeah, if I asked back then, are you creative? Your hands would fly up in the air. And now as you get older, and don't we start feeling a little bit worried about our creativity level? Well, maybe I can't draw, I can just draw stick figures, or some of you afraid, oh, I can't dance, or you know what? Throw that out, because that's what you learn as you get older. You get afraid, you get embarrassed. Fear is the biggest enemy to creativity. If you forget everything we talk about today, I want you to remember today. I want you to remember that beautiful, powerful, passionate, creative person you are today. So many times I talk to adults and I hear from them, oh yeah, I could do that when I was younger. I can't do it anymore. You know what we learn? We learn to be afraid of our creativity. So I want you to go further and I want you to say, hey, I'm gonna be a Leonardo da Vinci. I am always going to be able to unleash my Leonardo da Vinci. Unleash your da Vinci, people. Thanks for having me. Great, well, Scott, so it's, it's interesting. I love that you're talking about uh, da Vinci here because um, most of the kids will know this, but he's referred to as a Renaissance man because he did so many different things. And that was typical of that Renaissance period uh, to be involved in these new ideas in science and in art and creativity. Now, in your own life, you really encapsulate that spirit of da Vinci, right? Because not only are you an artist, but you've worked in advertising, you do comedy, you've worked in film, you do speaking. And so you really are in a lot of different creative fields. Has it always been that way for you? Like when you were a kid, were you just doing everything? 
Oh, thanks for asking that because you know what, it actually, paid, it goes back to Leonardo. Leonardo uh, was, had a struggle as a kid because his father uh, had him and his mother had him out of wedlock. In other words, he was not married to the person who birthed Leonardo. And if he did have him while he was married, he would have to take on his dad's job. And Leonardo da Vinci's dad was a guy that was a merchant. He dealed with money and he was a notary, those guys that put little em emblems on paper. But he was thrown out of the family almost. He was, he was pushed to the town, which was Florence at the time. And he, was, he had to struggle through not having enough money and, and, and being able to do what he could do. I kind of came from that too. And I know a lot of you kids, come from some struggle, you know, struggling in your background. I didn't have much money when I came up and I, and I struggled with dyslexia. I don't know if you know what that is, but I can't read and I spell terribly and I got failing grades going through school and I heard people call me stupid. I, I don't know if you have to deal with that kids, but I felt dumb and, and, and it's kind of like Leonardo, you have to fight through all of this to be what you can be. So I, I didn't turn out to be a writer. I didn't turn out to be uh, something that you need to write it. I turned out to draw and paint or dance or, or get up in front of a camera and be funny or be an art director in advertising. Do what you can. If, if one door shuts, turn to the right, find another door, go through that or go through another door. Try not to get dismayed by something that stands in front of you. Keep you know, persevering. Keep fighting hard and you'll find yourself doing the craziest things ever. Now, I, I like that advice. However, one of the things that makes me a little nervous is when we encourage kids to be really creative, what, what we can see is that kids that dabble with a lot of things, but never really reach excellence in any area. And so, you know, they'll try one thing and quit. They'll try another thing and quit. What was it for you? Because you've done a lot of things, but you've done them very well. So what made the difference from just being a dabbler to being a, an achiever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of times we feel that we're not good at something and it stands in our way or we can't be good at it. I have to tell you, I was bad at everything. Um, and then I, I thought I was cheating. I got in my fourth grade class, I loved the Flintstones and they had cartoons. I don't know if any of you remember Flintstones. Prehistoric times, so was the cartoon. <laughs> uh, but I would copy, literally trace over Flintstones heads and put my own words in, in Flintstones heads and I'd and I bring those to class and I'd show my friends. And they went, oh, that's really good, but you traced it. And I didn't realize that I was doing something that Leonardo da Vinci himself back in the Renaissance would teach his students. When he tried to teach him to paint, he would take a masterpiece from that day and he'd put it up on an easel and then he'd take pa painting, a, a canvas, and tell the people to copy it. And they'd mm -hmm. sit right next to it and copy it. And do you know they had to copy and copy and copy until they could do something original? They had to prove themselves that they could steal really good until they got great at it. And I, and Leonardo Tapp tells us that, that anyone can do that. Find something that you want to do that you're not good at. If you want to knit and you don't know how to knit, learn to knit. I remember my college roommate picked up a guitar and started playing guitar, learning guitar. And I'm going, dude, you're in college. It's too late. You can't learn <laughs> to play guitar now. But he practiced and he practiced and he copied song after song. And you know what he does for a living now? He plays guitar. Wow. So find something you're passionate about, and you may not be good at it, but just keep nailing it, keep practicing, and practice makes perfect. That's really great advice. So Scott, as you've gone through different stages of your life in perfecting different crafts and, and things like that, I, I want to talk a little bit about kind of that process of getting good and then at some point we have to decide, do I want to make a living doing this thing? So you got really good at art, you got really good at comedy, and you found a way to incorporate this into your life. But what did it take in each of those areas to kind of go from, this is something that I'm good at, that I enjoy, to this is something I want to do to make money? Yeah, 
uh, my father told me back when I had an elective in school. Now, some of you will have a chance to have an elective. And remember, I chose art. And my father looked at me and said, you're never going to make money at art. Hmm. But I still chose art. And when I got to college, I chose it as a major. And the head of the art department came out and said, all right, those people that have chosen as a major to be a designer, I just want to tell you that there's 300 people in your class. And this year, we are only going to graduate 10. Whoa. And every year, they only graduate about 10. That means 290 people drop off. Now, most people would go, oh, I'm not going to do that. I won't. But I took it as a challenge. I didn't think I was going to be the best person, but I said, I am going to try as hard as I can. And every semester, they'd knock a few people out. I just hung in there. they knock a few people out. And I told you I was a terrible student. So I fought through the classes that I wasn't good at and really tried hard the classes you are. And so when you think you can't do it, aim for it. And then even then, when I graduated, my head teacher said, Scott, congratulations. You're one of the 10. What design are you going to do? And I said, I've decided not to go into design, but go into advertising. And his face went pale. And he looked at me and said, really? You're going to waste all this amazing talent and go into advertising? And I did. And it was fun. And it was great. I ended up on Madison Avenue doing TV commercials for the craziest products in the world. Not everybody agreed with my choices. But those choices made me money. So choose what you like. Think about what I can do. Even in my art, you can see some paintings in the background. I don't make a ton of money painting, but I still paint because I love to paint. So just find the things that'll make you money and keep at the things that make you passionate about your art. That's fantastic. Now I want to circle back to Da Vinci. Um, as we talked about him earlier, one of the things that we didn't talk about is he got so good at so many different things because he was committed to lifelong learning. And obviously here in our virtual school uh, setting, we want to talk a little bit about the role of education. Now, that doesn't mean formal schooling, but to be successful and to continue creating throughout your life, education becomes an important part of that. So I want to know on your side of things, what have you, what kind of habits have you instilled or what are things that you do regularly so you continue learning and growing within your craft? Great. You know, I, I think a lot of times kids are, they have to do so much more a day. You probably have to do 10 times more than what Da Vinci himself did. But you really have to figure out where is what are you doing today that's going to add quality? You know, it's good to write stuff down. I know I was looking through some of the, Tyler, some of the videos you have up on your channel and they're spectacular kids. If you can watch some, as many as you can, they're fabulous. Even if they're not on your curriculum, watch them. One of them was talking about journaling. And you know, Leonardo would carry a notebook, literally a part, they didn't have phones back then. They had, he carried a notebook with him. And he constantly asked questions. He was so curious. And he asked questions. He didn't think he had the answer, like, why is the sky blue? He wasn't able to answer that. But he was constantly asking questions and writing down answers to things that he thought were there. You can do that on your phone. You're constantly teaching yourself. You're being curious. You're constantly asking questions. You're constantly learning. Learning never stops at graduation, it only gets more so. So write stuff down, put stuff down on your phone, even if it doesn't matter what you're doing, and then play it back. See what you were thinking back then. Bring alive those ideas that you had when you are younger, because they're pretty quality right there. Yeah, well, Scott, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. I, I love this whole message about bringing out your inner Da Vinci, because that's certainly something that all kids can do no matter what their interests are, there, there's that creative spark in them somewhere. And so I, I love the message. Now, if, if kids want to connect with you or see some of your art or what you're up to, where's the best place for them to find you online? Hey kids, I love to help you or ask questions or anytime you need a mentor or something that you're thinking about, feel free to uh, log on to shellstrom.com. And there you can go out to any one of my websites uh, or see my speaking site, it's scottshellstrom.com. And I'm happy, don't be afraid, ask any question you want to, and I'll make sure that I 
answer you personally in an email. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Scott. Thank you for asking me to be here, Tyler.